and gentlemen, welcome back to another. Um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but there are no props allowed while recording. I got it. Fully aware. I'm just saying. All I asked, I, I everyone knows it. What do you want? You need more cowbell. Is that what you really, really want? That's what I want. Give me what I want. Well, what do you want? I want more cowbell. Give me what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, this segment of the podcast is brought to you by the very emotional message of we will not stop until hashtag push Cesaro. Well, he'll stop. I mean, the world will stop when the old man is told to stop. And even then, he ain't going to no, stop. He's not. Jesus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition, incarnation, uh, episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. It's been a while since we've recorded. Unfortunately, we do not have the full band together today. Uh, Dan the Man uh, had other obligations, had other things that he had to honor, so it will just be the commish and myself. However, we are back Third episode of season two, I believe. Yeah, we have a lot of catching up to do, and I think you guys are going to hear everything that we've had to either bear, endure, grieve upon, suffer, be annoyed with, be put through, literally through the figurative table that is the WWE for the last three months. A lot of uh, synonyms there. But yes, he is right. There has been a lot going on. So I got to warn everybody, this might be a, a bit of an extensive episode, but it's going to be because we're going to be covering a lot of different avenues in one episode rather than splitting it off into one. But first thing that I wanted to start off with, uh, bef- this is not really like something that's been bothering us. It's just it was kind of brought to everybody's uh, attention. Um. Uh, Triple H, a month ago, made a comment uh, while, uh, you know, doing an interview with multiple interviewers, you know, for YouTube. And um, he seemed to have made a a joke about Paige. Like a disparaging joke that some people have brought to light for the last month now. Yeah. Um, And I think Paige took to social media that even my boss makes fun of me. uh, So what's stopping all of you, meaning all of us on social media from doing so? Um, So I I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to get your thoughts. But personally, do you think that because of the whole, because if you guys didn't know, of the whole sex tape, of the whole everything that came out, do you think that maybe that makes this whole thing just a little bit more personal if uh, okay if you're asking me i I would like to think that it adds on to it It, it, it's like adding more gasoline to the fire in other words because it's look everyone has a past everyone has actions that they've done in their lifetime that are either regrettable or their actions that they're proud of or whatever however you want to put it yeah like when people use it against you or use it like as like more ammunition in a way, yeah. there's no way of avoiding it. I mean, is it a slip? Is it considered like, okay, well, it's happened. You can't escape it. I get to mention not all of it, but I get to direct shots at you because of it. Yes and no. Yes, because it's done. Yeah. There's no way around it. No, because... We live in a society now that everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah. Unfortunately. And fortunately. I'm not trying to say that, oh, we should always be derogatory. We should always be rude towards one another and treat each other like however we want. But I'm not saying that, oh, you shouldn't be real. You shouldn't be honest. You shouldn't be, like, putting a pause on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, there are things professionally that sometimes you shouldn't blurt out in a professional environment. And I think that's where people are looking at Triple H like, "Mm, you're kind of blurring the lines of professionalism and personalization. But at the same time, it's like, it's unescapable. It's unavoidable. Yeah. So to me, 
I just think the timing was wrong. Timing is always wrong in most situations, yeah. depending where you're at. Uh, I mean, you you felt like how did it make you feel when like the interview itself and the afterwards, like everything coming after it. Well, I'm subscribed to one of the guys who was actually there interviewing um, Gorilla Position. I believe the guy's uh, the YouTube uh, channel's name is. So I actually heard that before. Page commented before you know social media outrage kind of struck, and the funny thing is like I heard it and I was like, eh, okay. Like it, it seems at first like, eh, yeah, like okay, you're trying to be stupid, cool. Um, and I because in in the interview he's like, uh, oh thank God, finally someone pops because there's like this awkward silence and someone goes, <laughs> and he's like, oh thank God somebody popped for the joke. If you really think about it, the joke really doesn't even make sense when you really just think about it. Um, but I think Triple H being in a position of sort of being like a boss, uh, you know, the creator of NXT and the guy who kind of pulls the ropes here and there. Um, it's kind of like the thing where it's like you're a high authority figure and yet you're making derogatory jokes towards an employee who A, cannot wrestle anymore and B had a catastrophic event take place, which she almost did something stupid. She's mm-hmm. gone on record to say. So it, to me, it's like, oh, it's like that moment where it's like, oh, Triple H, you a hole. But it's also like, okay, bro, like put the brakes on. I get it. You come from an era where you look at everybody, you know, figuratively and physically and you go suck it and you, you do all that. But there comes to a time where it's like, you need to like tone it down and just you know even just if just remember that you're in a new era where everything has to be done this way everything yeah. has to be different from what it was like yeah if you think about it this is I think I just thought of this analogy like the right to censor then it's like, <laughs> yeah it's annoying as hell it's unnecessary now it's like okay they make a point they're yeah. making the point and it, it's like the they're not there, but the guidelines of what yeah. they wanted are there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the reality we live in now. Yeah. So, again, not, not to drag this along, but I just I feel like we had to give our thoughts on it. I mean, personally, now we hear that, I mean, yesterday Paige was supposed to come back and confront Bailey, but because of this coron- coronavirus, uh, they wound up doing a taping in an empty arena. Um, so Paige's uh, return, quote unquote, got postponed. But I, I gotta be honest with you. I'm thinking maybe she got clear to compete, and this is their way of maybe doing a Bailey versus Paige for the women's championship at Mania. It's crossed my mind because I mean, why would Paige come up out of nowhere and confront Bailey? You know? I mean, where's the agenda? Where? Where? Yeah. What's What's the story that we're getting out? Of? Yeah. Even if Bailey attacks Paige, it's like, what's Paige going to do? Call out somebody else from the roster and go, hey, go take care of my, you know, business for me. And half the SmackDown women's roster isn't as, I don't want to say lucrative, but I want to say like, it's not as good as Raw's women's division. Yeah. It seems like they have the shift in power right now over SmackDown's women division. I mean, maybe if you unpaired certain people on SmackDown, it would level the playing field, yeah. but it's still raw women's over SmackDown women. Well, we're going to get to women's in just a second because we got to discuss that uh, Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Yeah. But Let's just run the bullet pay-per-views and then get to EC. So, let's see. TLC last year was... Meh. What happened? Oh, yeah. Wait, what happened? All Nothing. I remember is Bray and Miz. That's all I remember. Exactly. But it even wasn't The Fiend. It was Bray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's the only thing that stood out. And even then, that story died right as soon as the match was over. Well, we'll, we'll get back to The Fiend, but uh, let's continue. Royal Rumble. If you guys didn't see our Instagram, we predicted right. Did we call it or did we call it? Unfortunately... Um, even if we called it for the women's rumble, it's not what should have happened, but the old man gets his way yet again. Oh, it was bound to happen. The second they announced the women's Royal Rumble taking place, I was like, it's just a matter of time until Charlotte wins it. Until you give it to her. Yeah, let's be honest. 
But the men's, honestly, it, it was a fan favorite choice. It's it, like, it was it's good. It's his time. And yes. He he has been pushing for, what, 11 years now almost? Yeah. Being in the WWE where it's like he's gone from having, you know, the look of the quote-unquote chosen one to being fired to coming back better in NXT, yeah. winning the heavyweight championship of NXT being a, were they tag champions him and Dolph yeah they were tag champions was he an intercontinental champion at one point no not that I recall well the, during the first run yes not the second okay. run. yeah so he's won everything there except the main gold itself yeah. and now it's his time I was happy with the decision that they went with that I think it's the best choice because there's this thing going that Vince buried Ricochet <laughs> That's why Ricochet got his match at the next pay per view we're going to talk about. But the reality is, even he addressed it on social media. It's like, I'm not buried. This is what I do. This is my job. If I'm told to do something, I'm doing it. Otherwise, you guys can speculate all you want, but I still have a career here. End of story. Everything else about the Royal Rumble was. Yeah. It was and, there. And then we get another. Actually, you know what? This Super Showdown, this show in Saudi was actually a lot better than all the ones they've had. I kind of skimmed through some of the matches, so... It, I kind of watched most of it, but some were skim-worthy moments. Yeah. But it, it felt a little bit better. The only thing, though, is... All right, let, let's, I think let's, we should let's address talk about it, it now, yes, yes. Because, honestly, it's been the one thing... That, okay, you're pushing it into a dick. All right, so let's just get it over. You bring the fiend, and he chose Goldberg because he wanted to work with him. (sighs) (laughs) That's how. Goldberg? Really? Um, I think that Goldberg is a victim of circumstance. Explain why. Why do you think that? So, first of all, when you kind of go back, I think that WWE did not really have long-term or didn't write out long-term plans for The Fiend's title reign. Because when you go back and you think he won it out of Saudi show when he was supposed to win it at Hell in a Cell after 13 curb stomps and a hammer to the head. Oh, but no, but apparently you can still get disqualified by that. Yeah. Referee stoppage is the technical term for it. Thank you, X-Pac, for... Making it perfectly clear that it yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, in the in the watch along video, thank you. Um, old school. Um, so when you really consider the Fiend's title reign began at last year's uh, Crown Jewel, was yeah. it Crown Jewel? It was Crown Jewel. Which, by the way, made no sense because you make the match a regular match, false count anywhere, but yet they're allowed a little bit more violence. Even though you're in an era where you're trying to tell them Tone. down. Uh, NXT has been pushing that. Well, they, they're, we're going to address that one. Yes. Later. But my point is that, so The Fiend wins the title at a not noteworthy pay-per-view. I think that his run was, was good. I think that there were standout moments. And it, actually, there was kind of this running thing where everybody that he would face and defeat would change. Seth turns heel. Daniel Bryan, you know, shaves off his, all his hair and, you know, embraces, you know, the new face turn. Everybody Finn else... Finn Balor goes back to NXT. It goes back to NXT. He goes back as a heel. Exactly. So there was this running thing of whatever the Fiend touches changes. Or destroys, if you would like to take it that way. If you're a fan of face wrestlers. Where yes. We embrace the reality of the heel. <laughs> um, but then we get to this. Goldberg versus The Fiend. Now, once again, mm-hmm. I feel like we are Goldberg is a victim of circumstance because I think there might have been plans where The Fiend defeated Goldberg, but then went on to Mania and was going to lose it to Roman. And you know for a fact that if Roman won at Mania and took that title from The Fiend, there would be mass chaos. I think that was the only, this is going to be the only safe way for Roman to become the Universal Champion again because... A lot of people would call it unfair that, oh, you're putting over, again, one of your top wrestlers that you love and embrace where fans are always going to be mixed-sided with. Personally, look, 
I may have not liked what his direction was, but I don't hate wrestlers in the WWE. I don't hate wrestlers in any other company. I just, I disagree with the storylines of it. Yeah, you've heard me talk a lot of shit about Sasha, about Bailey, Charlotte, um, what is it? Um, Raquel? Not just her, but I'm, I'm talking like, I mean male wrestlers as well, like Baron Roman, Corbin. Baron, all of them. Does that mean I hate them as individuals? No. They're they're human beings at the end of the day. They go to work. If you go to Instagram, you'll be surprised at how normal they actually yeah, are. They're yeah. regular, everyday people just like us. I mean, yeah, they have more money and all, but they're still human beings. Yeah. I just hate the, the direction that sometimes the creative team or the writers or whoever's in charge takes them in, which makes me dislike their character. Yeah. Now, again, going back to the original, Fiend versus Roman... Roman wins at Mania. Everyone would lose their crap. Everyone would go berserk. Like, no, this is wrong. Why would you do that to the Fiend? He deserves the title. In the long scheme, it's going to make sense. You take it off him at Super Showdown. You take it off Goldberg at Mania. Okay. It's an equal, fair balance. Yeah. You don't end up hating Roman for being the Universal Champion again for, what, the third time? Technic or second? Second? Second. Second. He won it from Brock and then had to really finish it, yeah. So, it makes sense. But do you, I think that that term comes into play. WWE book themselves into a corner where it's like, what's the lesser of two evils? And once again, all this could have been prevented had you just... Because everybody was saying, oh, Bray pretty much has control of his character. Whatever he says, it, it seems like Vince McMahon is listening. Mm-hmm. I think that when it came to Saudi, that wasn't the case. It was like, all right, bro, you've had your chance in the spotlight. All right, Goldberg's going to beat you tonight. And I think right now, like, the, the tone down of the WWE because of certain global situation of what's going on right now, we're not getting... We're not going to get the best of anything because let's face it, everything's being done at the peace, uh, the performance center. Yeah. Everything is being monitored to make sure the health and well-being of every human in the world. But at the same time, it's like, okay, we're going to get toned down stories that make no sense because it's like, you need crowd reaction. You need yeah. people physically there to embrace the story because, okay, let's face it. If Paige would have come back What's the point? It's like, uh, yeah. And the funny thing is, I don't think anybody ever realized how important the crowd is for a show. And it's like, now that kind of shows. like mm-hmm. oh, It shows where the story goes, yeah. how people are embracing it or rejecting, whatever. But with the cases where we went with The Fiend, yeah. before all this happened, we were going in the direction where it's going to be The Fiend versus John Cena. It's because this, like he said it himself on I think Twitter or Instagram, this for him it's coming full circle with John. Yeah. To make John his next focus, it's like okay, well, we got what we wanted a few years ago, but yet John kind of buried. Bray no, Lyon. he did. No, okay, he, did. he buried yeah. Bray, and now it's like okay, well, John's learning that okay, I don't need the shovel anymore. I don't need to be the main guy. But I still like what I do. Yeah. So, are we going to see John's burial again at the greatest show of all? Like it happened for my friend over here two years ago. It's his favorite match of the night. That was great. It's the best two minutes that he enjoyed that I'm going to watch it after this. Oh, of course he is. Um... <laughs> But you get where we're going. Yeah. Like, the, the that match needs to happen for sure. Yeah. Fiend versus John. But the Fiend needs to go over. And I think he will. Because if, um, if the Fiend doesn't go over, I feel like, again, there are so many ways for a crowd to riot. And I think that if there is one WrestleMania that can spark any of that, it's this one. Because a false decision could lead to that. The, the, the right people need to win this year at WrestleMania. Imagine yeah, like, yeah, ima- last year, oh, what was everything it? but. Mm. Remember, we said everything would have been 10 out of 10 last year, except what happened. We'll get to that later. <sighs> but 
Okay, your speculation on what needs to happen between Goldberg and Roman. Spear versus Spear. Roman's going to win, obviously. But is it going to be just the matter of power versus power, or is there actually going to be a match? They're probably going to do what they did with Brock Lesnar three years ago, where it was, you know, Spear, uh, German suplex, Spear, German suplex, Spear. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Spear... Superman punch, Superman punch, spear, Superman punch, spear, Superman punch, and then Roman gets the win. Like eventually, maybe it'd be nice to see like a jackhammer a kick out. Although I've never really seen anyone really kick out of the jackhammer. You gotta watch out because those jackhammers, like you saw what he did with Taker, where it was more of a brain buster, and with the fiend, I don't know if you saw, but it, like and you hear him scream, he's like, ah! and like he he just he barely gets him so. Be careful, man. Like, you, concussions and all, just be careful with that, you know? But no, yeah, I, I, I see Roman winning because let's be honest. How long is Goldberg going to be a part timer and be a champion and, you know, continue this year? I mean, credit where credit's due that he's won that belt or a championship belt. He's in good condition. I'll take nothing away. The guy's, what, 50, 52, 53? Like, phenomenal. Great. You know, that that's all nice, but. When you're part timing, like, think of how many part timers are taking up the card this year. John Cena. I don't know if you can count Brock Lesnar. Um, mm, Semi part time. Okay. Goldberg. Mm -hmm. uh, what other matches do we have? Taker. Taker. So, as you can see, opportunity is getting taken away from people who are not able to participate in a WrestleMania who are full time. Anyway, I stand by my point that I would rather have this happen, Goldberg win, than having The Fiend retains, go to Mania, after 80 Spears, loses the title. 80, by the way. 80, yeah. And which brings us to our final conclusion of uh, pay-per-views. 2020's Elimination Chamber. A moment of silence. For the emptiness that exists in us because of this pay-per-view and we're done okay <laughs> that's how we feel this, this was well, well this let, let's, 2020s let's like go that. through it okay. let's go through it and, and so we'll i'm gonna thoughts. okay so let's start do we need prelim there's no, only one no, match okay no, no. daniel bryan versus drew gulak I was expecting a 20-second squash match, but I was very impressed. I like where they're going. I like their direction. That They, they kind of bring us back to that feeling of like, oh, two good wrestlers actually yeah. having a good match. Giving them, hey, you guys want to work together? Give us five star. Yeah, 15, which, 20 minutes. Yeah, which, it was great. It was a good match. I liked it. I cringed at those back suplexes, ooh, so ooh, watch out. Was, Please like, watch they, out. I think someone His body kind of got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like... Uh, so, ju just let's be a little bit careful. Yeah, let's not push it, but excellent match. I would say match of the night, honestly. I would probably say match of the night. The return of your United States champion, Andrade, versus Humberto Carrillo. I didn't watch it. That's like... I think we talked about this the other time right now, but I feel like it's a case of grouping uh, wrestlers, wrestlers with, together, with, with, together. This is what I'm not liking. It, it's like, why yeah. do we have to have Andrade, Humberto, um, Angel, Angel Garza, and Ray just only work with each other? They can work with... There is a roster. Yeah. There is a roster in place. They can... Let's get Ricochet involved. I was just going to say Garza. Ricochet. Let's He's... get... Because I think it's going to happen, hopefully it happens within two months from now. I think Seth said he wants to take a break, so the group might split up. So let's get Buddy Murphy involved against Garza or yeah. Umberto or somebody. Hell, when Bobby Lashley decides to come back from Africa, get him involved against... He's in Africa? Supposedly. Oh. I think on the bump, he was calling live from there. Oh, okay. Um, but let's get him involved against uh, Andrade for the U U.S. Championship. Let's I get... Mixed culture, or if not just mixed matches, where you separate these four yeah. and get them wrestling everybody else. I mean, you have freaking Rey Mysterio in there, who seems like you know the fourth wheel in this whole thing. You wow. know, I think you even know that the guy is coming up on retirement, and it's like this is how you want his career to end. Give him an Intercontinental Championship. Give him a U.S. Championship. Let him have a decent run. 
I don't know. Anyway. Uh, the elimination tag match. Where Miz and Morrison beat out every other team of the Usos, Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, New Day, and Dolphin Root. Black sheep of the match, I think, was Lucha House Party. Very, very impressive. Doing flips, very innovative stuff. I was very impressed. I even mid-match was like, if you strip away the gimmick, take away the um, the pinatas, take away all that and just tell these guys, just go out there and do what you do best. This is what happens. I was very, very impressed with Lucha House Party. I mean, they, they bring that extra element of like, all right, Use your surroundings to your advantage. Yeah. Like, the fact that, like, you... Was it, uh... Grand Metallic up at the very top? I, the yeah, yeah. The did the flip, yeah, yeah. That was him. That was him. He used his surroundings to his advantage. I mean, yeah, you could see nowadays, like, oh, I gotta stand. Okay, we gotta all make sure we catch him. Yeah, yeah. whatever. But still... You would never think 20 years ago someone's going to climb a cage and flip themselves off of it. Lince Dorado was impressive when he did yeah. that flip on top and then just came Jesus. down. Jesus. That, that yeah. That's a very confined space for you to do a flip and just come down. But um, It I, was a decent match. It was good for very what long, they added to it. Very long. Half hour. Yeah. Eh, Moving on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alistair Black versus AJ Styles in a no DQ. Um, we know what this was setting up. Uh, Dead Man made an appearance, uh, costing AJ the match. Um, which, which scares me a little bit because he cost AJ the Saudi match, cost AJ this match. So I'm just hoping that we don't get to a point where AJ he turns wins. to three. No, AJ wins. No, I mean turns to like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think so. I think because if you think about it, even AJ is nearing the point where he's getting to retirement yeah. as well. Because he said, my last extension is my last. This is your last. And yeah. WWE's where it's ending. Yeah. He's been everywhere. Ring of Honor, Impact, um, Independent Japan. Circuit, New Japan, and WWE. He, he's accomplished everything as one of the greatest wrestlers yep. in the modern time. I like I I don't know what this is doing in regards to Alistair though. If I, if maybe we would have gotten Alistair versus the Undertaker, it could have been interesting. something very interesting. But I get that AJ probably like told uh, the creative team like I want the Undertaker. Yeah. I want to wrestle with the greatest. Yep. Other than last man. Uh. <laughs> Street Profits versus Seth and Buddy. Mm. I like that they have the belts. They're a good tag team. Yeah. Kind of pointless. Yeah. As far as match-wise, because it's like repeating the same match from Raw. Yeah, very repetitive. I like the fact that th- this this feud is using a lot of people, which is good. Gives them a lot it's of It's not time. just two people. Yeah. And like... A group. It's yeah. the group having issues with the Viking Raiders, Street Profits, Kevin Owens. Samoa Joe before he got suspended. Everybody. Everyone's involved and somehow it's like, okay, this is what we wanted. Utilize as much talent as you can, yeah. but make the story make sense. Yes. Otherwise, it's like, oh, we have Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe and the Viking Raiders and they're going to take on AOP, Seth, and Buddy. What's the point? You get where we're going. They're utilizing their talents and giving them reason. Yeah. Sammy Zayn, the three on one Intercontinental match. I'm I'm not even gonna. I mean, congrats to Sammy. Here's the thing. Long overdue for a belt. Yeah, but not the way that you wanted him to win. No. Yeah, I mean. Let's be real and let's be honest. Are you buying into Sammy Zayn being a heel? No, I'm not. What the hell is he doing? First of all, Sammy, get a haircut. Second of all, do not wear that military-esque trunks again. Sam- I don't like the, the hat, the fedora or whatever yeah. the hell he's wearing lately. Uh, thirdly, stop uh, parading around when you're around Cesaro and Shinsuke. Uh, I just... It's a bad heel tactic. Four or five years ago, this guy was having a classic match with John Cena, was getting the biggest pop in the building, and was your biggest baby face fresh out of NXT. Five years later. 
he's demanding no cowbell. He's taking a Saturday Night Live bit for something so stupid and is burying three talents. I feel like Cesaro, Shinsuke, and Braun are being wasted in this. I really do feel like they're being wasted. Oh, and utilizing Elias. And Braun pretty much. It, it, it's it's, it's just like... Uh, again, for the fourth year in a row, you are going into WrestleMania without a significant program for Braun Strowman. That is a crime. That is a shame. The guy still hasn't won a WWE or Universal Championship. Or at least been put into a story that makes sense for him to be in. Let me guess. Who did he piss off this time? Huh? Because that's why you take his push away, right? Because he pisses you guys off backstage. Moving on to the final match, the Women's Elimination Chamber match. Raw's... Uh, technically, it's just, what, everyone from Raw. Yeah. Um, to be very, very honest, waste of a match. Um, not because it wasn't good, but because you begin insinuating that Shayna and Becky are feuding. But then you tell me that, oh, Shayna needs to go into an Elimination Chamber match to qualify to face Becky. Because she can't win the Rumble because you have to have Charlotte win. So how do we put Shayna and Becky together? Oh, that's how. Even though we kind of already started putting them together. But let's, let's, let's put reasoning and logic behind why she's feuding with So them. I'm hearing that Vince has no trust in Shayna being a main eventer. That's what I heard, that he feels... She doesn't have the it factor. Well, then he's blind and he doesn't know what he's doing and he needs to retire and needs to give the full control to Triple H. We've been pushing for that for the last two years. And we're not going to get it. Not Um, not even close. I even made the suggestion, I think, in our Instagram (laughs) chat that I think it would have been a whole lot more meaningful if you had a six uh, SmackDown women's contender match. Where And I even thought about this, where let's say everybody's making their way to, to the Elimination Chamber. Let's say you have a, a Carmella in the match. Uh, where's Carmella? Her music hits. Where is she? Where the heck is Carmella? Okay, well, just, just start the match and then one of them will we'll think of something. Well, okay, who's the last person? Where's Carmella? Sasha Banks comes out. Sasha Banks comes out and then qualifies to face Bailey at WrestleMania, and you finally get your match. Sasha Banks versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. That to me would have made a whole lot more sense than Shayna's gonna feud with Becky. Oh, but how do we make it sense? Just put her in an Elimination Chamber match. Okay, she won. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay, one of our storylines finally has some logic to it. This is okay, but look, look who's in this match. Can we discuss that for a second? Shayna versus Nat versus Liv versus Ruby versus Sarah versus Asuka. You're throwing, you're throwing in Os- no, not Asuka. Natalie because you don't have a sixth to start. If we're being serious for a minute. You're throwing in Asuka because half the time we don't know how durable Kyrie is. So if she's not in a tag match with her Oh, she could still be a singles competitor. Although I would like to see if they lose their tag belts, Kyrie versus Asuka. I would like to see that. Heel versus heel, though. Interesting. And then we disintegrate the Riot Squad. Don't get me wrong, I think Liv is looking really gorgeous lately. Well, all, all, all three of them are. I'm not gonna lie. All three yeah. of them are. But let's 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 talk about that. I gotta be honest with you. The second when Ruby came back, to me the writing was already on the wall. I was like, she's gonna betray her. Go, come on, just do it, do it. There it is. Let's just okay. Sarah comes from out of nowhere. Comes out from Wednesday night main event shows facing Dana <laughs> Brooke, and all of a sudden is involved. Okay. But she's involved in a sense where it's like, I want to fight them, but I don't want to fight them. I'm torn apart by my friendship with them, and now I'm, oh no, I've gone (laughs) cross-eyed. And I mean, especially when you consider, we always saw behind the scenes, these three were very tight. And I mean, still are. Yeah, they still are. So I think that if you were going to have a betrayal, you needed to build it up. Like, really build it and come up with not just... 
Ruby's back from injury. Okay, um, just betray Liv and we'll put you guys in a triple threat pre-show match at Mania. That's where I think this is going. A triple threat pre With kickoff match. what? Good backing, though. No. There's nothing. But you get our point. You, you're, you're just throwing. You're, what, how, as Dan has said it, throw it against the wall. If it sticks, six. it works. Wrong on all counts. Now, I will say this. I like the way that Shayna was booked. Ba- basically, uh, I thought back to SummerSlam 03, Goldberg-esque, where mm-hmm. he just gets out of his pod and just... Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this. The most extraordinary and most amazing part about this entire match is that, ladies and gentlemen, Shayna Baszler defeated all of her opponents using the most destructive move in the move of 1,004 holds. This was move number 169. Um, Kamish, my memory is running a little <sighs> bit bad. The semi-dark Piper Drive. Followed by the Arm Bar. Very well. Um, yeah, I mean, Shayna did what she's supposed to do. And they and with her being, I think she sets the record now with Braun most eliminations five. The crowd five. hated it, by the way. Did you hear those boos? Uh, and it wasn't. They're not booing because she's doing her job as a heel. They're booing because they know what's coming. It's a. It was a poor assembly, is what it was. There was honestly no point. You could have just had the contract signing at Elimination Chamber, and I think that would have been better rather than put Shayna in the match just to. Double confirm. Is there even a SmackDown Women's Championship? I mean, yeah, which is why I told you I think Paige is coming back to surprise return. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I did bring up the Sasha idea, but so it seems like we're we're done talking about EC and we're talking about the women's division now. Let let let's get into that direction. So we know what we're getting as far as Raw goes. With Bailey, or no, Bailey, Becky versus uh, Blazer. And to me, it's just like, all right, you're pushing for something we wanted to see at a Survivor Series or at a different pay per view. This isn't really Mania esque, and it shouldn't be the main event. I think it's because Shayna is fresh in the in the main the roster. roster. Yeah. You, you come from NXT. Um, but I think they, again, they booked themselves into a corner where it's like, well, Becky has kind of demolished everyone. Who are we going to give her? Oh, well, let's give her Charlotte. No, everyone's tired of that. Oh, let's give her Asuka. No, they finally settled it. If Rhea doesn't win at WrestleMania, and I am on record for this, I am officially done with Charlotte. He won't leave the pay-per-view. He's just done enjoying it. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, what's her name? Uh, Blonde Cena. Thank you. So, okay, so that that's the... Not the fresh road we're getting with Raw. Because I guess we're involving NXT now. Charlotte has decided to go backwards in her career. Let me face the NXT Women's Champion. But see, again, I think that this situation, much like uh, Fiend and Goldberg, WWE booked themselves into a corner because... We don't want to see Charlotte versus Becky again. Because what's the point? We don't want to see Charlotte versus Bailey again. again. Because what's the point? So ultimately, it came down to well, she okay. hasn't faced someone that's to her quote unquote standard, but we do have someone that is dominant, maybe a little bit better than her. Oh, let's throw Rhea Ripley in the mix and. If you guys haven't been watching Rhea before her title win... Impressive. She's been the dominant force. Hell, even before she changed her look into what it is now, she's always been someone that Paul Heyman can say, oh, in a few years, Rhea Ripley is going to be in WrestleMania. She's going to face the top woman of the women's division. I think she's a pillar for the women's division, 100%. Because I think... Roughly from Survivor Series to now, your prospect is Rhea. I don't see anybody else 
from NXT. At least right now. At I least, mean, yeah. Not, not maybe in next year, Bianca steps up or... Six months from now, five months from now, the day after Mania, sure. But I think that right now, Rhea is... Is, is, is your girl. Yep. She's the one you go to. If it goes in the direction that we would like to see where Rhea gets over, this would put her to that point where it's like, okay, she's she can go to any roster she wants. She will be tough to face, but she'll give you entertainment. Yes. You can put her against Becky in a few months from now. You can put her against Bailey or Paige or whoever has the SmackDown belt. Rhea brings crowds to the event. Yes. Now, as far as SmackDown goes, like I told you off air, I feel like SmackDown's women division is lackluster compared to Raw. If you separate some people like Sasha and Bailey, and maybe stop putting Carmella into tag opportunities, you will have a good division, just almost as good as Raw. Yeah. You do need a little bit more, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Bliss and um, Nikki. Together. Those need to stay together at least for now. Yeah. Give them the belts back. Make them two-time women's champion and then tag champs. The Iconics are completely gone at this point. I, all they're doing is training. With who? Is he allowed to be mentioned? Mm, never mind. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about... Don't spear company. me with that answer. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but you get the point. Yeah. There, there needs to be more... In regards to SmackDown, to make SmackDown just as credible as Raw and NXT, I would like maybe Bianca go to SmackDown, okay, and then have her meet up with Rhea at the Rumble next year. Interesting. Like have Rhea on Raw eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can have an event right there. She was very dominant at this year's Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bianca Belair was. And I, 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 I like it because when you look at Bianca, she's her own style. You know, yeah. she stands out 100%. Like, she doesn't need to be given a gimmick or given, like, some kind of moniker to take on. Yeah. She, she's selling it herself. Yeah. Like, we know that, she, what, I think she's, what, is she family with one of the Street Prophets? Or is she... she uh, um, married? relationship. Okay, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. dating one of the guys. Yeah. Ain't, no, what's his name? Angelo Dawkins. Yeah. Was it Angelo Dawkins or was it the other one? Anyway. But she still presents herself as her own individual. Yep. She doesn't need a crutch on anything. Yeah. That's why I would like to think by 2021 we'll get an even balance on all three shows. Yes. I mean, with NXT you do have a lot and you still have a lot to develop. Hell, maybe Dan will find, Dan and all of us will get our wish at Survivor Series. Four versus four. Maybe. Who knows? Or maybe it'll take till next year. But there's talent. It's just SmackDown to me really lacks out of all three brands right now. And it's sad. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to check out the Ruthless Aggression series on the network. Not yet. Which, by the way, you can get it for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. dollars um, but the funny thing is I, I hear the superstars who were actively wrestling at that time and they said there was this there was this line that was drawn between Raw and SmackDown. It was two different things. The guys on Raw wanted to beat SmackDown and the guys on SmackDown wanted to beat Raw in the ratings. That, that's all they cared about. Mm-hmm. Who's grossing the most? Who's getting the most reactions? Who's the better show? Now it just seems like Eh. Oh, you guys are there? Cool. How are yeah. you guys doing? Yeah? Okay. Good luck. Get some nice pops out there. Yeah. It's no more of that competition. It's no more of it's that. It's like they're they're friends, but hey, if we got to throw jabs at you guys, we're going to throw jabs at you guys because we want to be the better show. You had two or four drafts in the last two or three years, which did nothing it's like you switched a few people and that's it. And yeah. then you re You them. have to re-switch them because you don't want people who are in relationships to lose the relationship. Charlotte. Sure. Um, so stupid. So stupid. Come and on. the fact that she's not happy with her position. Gee, I am unhappy I haven't had 10 titles. 
said no one ever. Um, oh, don't worry. No time. It's going to be 16. Um, sorry. But you get our point. Hopefully. I mean, th- and this is where I get into it with, with wondering what's going on with all these championships. So I want to draw the attention now to that. Yeah. So we talked about the SmackDown Women's Belt and where we think it's going or what's going to happen with it. With Raw, would it matter if Shayna wins or would it be better if Becky wins? I think maybe you keep Becky being dominant, but she barely wins. But She survives. She doesn't She, she, she has survives. to sell it yeah. that she survives. And eventually, Becky's going to have to lose the belt. Of course. It's yeah. going to have to be stripped off her or at least given to someone that's ready to move forward with it. Because at one point, I'm sorry, but the man run and the whole thing of it's only her having it is going to come to an end. It has to. Yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. I think that when the the moment that I can tell you that Becky was red hot was the end of 2018. Okay. When the when the Royal Rumble happened, okay, that was good. But then we got into that bust of a feud where you know. It's Ronda and it's Becky. Cool. Okay. That's what you need. Here's the wrench. Let's throw Charlotte in because Charlotte needs to get her way. Oh, and she's still not happy. See, this is what I'm... But didn't we give her the SmackDown belt to be happy? What does she want? I don't know what she wants. What what does she really, really want? I don't know what she wants. I mean, she wants that. She wants that. I mean, this could go on for a while. For three pages. (laughs) Um, but yeah, and so when, when that was happening and then you got that lackluster of a finish, it's like, it, it's, it's supposed to be that moment of culmination. Oh, from SummerSlam to WrestleMania, Becky finally did it. And she did it by proving she's the strongest for both brands with both belts. But because someone wouldn't play ball, we got what we got and it's like, Yay. I think I told you, I I woke up that morning with Ronda being champion. I went to sleep and I feel like I I woke up and all of a sudden Becky was champion. Like Like that's just that That's what it felt like to me. Like, yeah, it it is not like you woke up excited that you found out. Yeah. Like, it's like you got a text from it. It's like, okay. You weren't excited. Yeah. It's like, it's sunny one moment and oh, it's raining. Okay. So what's going on later? Yeah, later. Yeah, so that type of thing. You 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 need you need to feel it when moments like that, especially when it's main event. I mean, you have to feel it. When that happened, we're like, like okay. Obviously, everyone knows twelve is my favorite, and when Sean won the belt, everyone felt it. Everyone felt okay. His dream came true. The boyhood he's, dream, as it, Vince it, said. It, it. He's the champion. Awesome. What's another great moment? When Austin beat Sean. The Austin era has begun. What's another moment? Um, When Brock beat Kurt Angle. I mean... Stevie. It's up there, but it's also blemished with Stevie. Batista. Ray. Everyone that has won the main event is always seen as it's... Amazing! It's it, this it, what you it wanted. It needs to hit. It needs to hit. If it doesn't hit, then all that hype and it it goes to nothing. And then we trended to oh, she has competition with Lacey now, and then we get three months of crap. I think if if we got the Lacey of now, then I see a much better feud. Honestly. Because Lacey, you saw well, she was still... You, you saw Lacey's transition, too, from then to now. I'm just... I'm talking about ring work. Okay, okay. Because yeah. you, you saw... I think there was visibly one moment where Becky so gets if, frustrated. So if Lacey, ring-wise, now was then... Was then. It would have been a better... Yeah. Because Lacey's still a heel. Yeah. Right? Okay. Because you got to admit, Lacey's heel work was great. I personally liked it. I liked it. it. I liked it. Um, And then we got... That got grouped with... Oh, Seth and Becky are dating. We shouldn't make it obvious, should we? No, let's make it obvious. Let's okay. Just throw him in somehow. Lacey needs a guy partner. Um, Baron, Baron, you're not busy. 
And and then what happened? Um, After that was over, what she what did she do at SummerSlam? Matt. That was extremely lackluster. What did I tell you last year? Remember what I told you about Natty when I was like, when you think back to Natty, there's never a point where you can say Natty was the pinnacle of the division. Yeah. And and you thought I was throwing jabs, but I'm like, just think about it for one second. You thought about it and you were like, holy, holy crap. crap. Right. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing that can stand out in her career that unfortunately says... Yeah, let's let's vote you in today to the Hall of Fame. And you just said it ten minutes ago. She took up an elimination chamber spot because, well, we need a body. We need someone there. That's what was done for. Not that she's not talented, but that's what was done for Becky to continue her momentum with the belt. And then what do we do? And, and then um, I, it's very I, unworthy of remembrance. I I think the Oscar stuff was good. I was just hoping for a better payoff because I think I gave you my idea where when you went to the Rumble, you had Asuka disqualify herself just to kind of piss Becky off and be like, you can't beat me. I don't got to face you. You're never going to beat me. Yeah. So you spent from Royal Rumble to Mania building that up. Becky costs the Kabuki Warriors the title, takes out Kyrie, you know, gets underneath Asuka's skin and goes, if you want to fight, I'm ready. Meet me at WrestleMania. And then Becky finally defeats Asuka and has that moment of, okay, I but collected you, my last debt. But do you see that how long that would have taken to get from 35 to 36 to even give that moment finally to Becky when she should have had it since 35? That's the problem, too. You see what the problem is, is that instead of hiring writers who understand a thing or two, we hire Jeff, who just graduated from a university has written for two shows and now is going to be the head writer for Raw. Who's never written for wrestling to begin with. I mean, I'm going to say this right now. Hell, if we have to get Vince Russo on the line. I said it. Wow. I'm not talking about WCW Russo. I'm yeah. talking about Before WWE. Yep. WCW. Yeah. I literally thought I'm like if 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 we have to make that phone call, make the phone call because this is pathetic. Look at what happened with Eric Rowan, that whole thing with the cage. I'm like, you know what? I like it a little bit of mystique. Maybe we're building it up. He pulls out a, a rubber spider out of it. I'm like, this 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 is what you had, or rather, this is what you didn't have, and you thought, well, we got to cap this off with something. All right, just put a spider in there and be done with it. And have Drew destroy it. No, I don't know. Like, okay. Now, those are women's championships. We've discussed it from tag team to NXT, Raw, SmackDown. And we kind of talked about the IC championship. Who's the champion? Sammy. Okay, who's US? Andrade. Andrade, yeah, that's right. Where are you going with him? Well, Andrade? With his belt, with his run. It's like, okay, he has it, but... You're not bringing relevance to that belt again anymore. I told you, uh, Zelina Vega needs to stop winning his matches for him. I think she should try to win a match, but cost him the match, and he loses it to realize, I don't need you. They teased that one time, but immediately went back to them being okay. You need to give the belt relevance, just like with the Intercontinental Championship. Now, and then we got Brock, who we all know where it's going. And the fact that Brock is playing ball is something a lot of people are like, oh, well, Brock's just a part-time guy. He does whatever he wants. Paul Heyman lets him get away. No, Paul Heyman tells him what to do yeah. backstage. He's yeah. like, you're going to lose. You're going to make money regardless. But you're gonna lose. You and see you're gonna that, lose fair. You see that one clip where apparently Brock was pissed off because Drew didn't grab the belt. Yeah. After the claymore. So I think about it, I'm like, you know that, that Brock didn't have to do that, but he's telling you like, hey, bro, pick up the belt. Like, like this is your moment. You know. You want your moment to be big? Do it. Yeah. Like, Which you, is why then they had to go to the to the stage and then do the whole spot against so that you know Drew could raise it up. Well, then they had the thing where someone revealed that even during commercials that Brock was crawling back 
after the claim was. To, to, that he's to still playing it. ball. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing people don't get about Brock Lesnar is that, yeah, he's a part-time guy. Yeah, he doesn't have to be on the show. But when he is, he's there to work. He's there to show, like, okay, I'm here to work. And I'm going to sell the fact that, yes, I am the champion. No one can stop me. Find me someone suitable to stop me. Oh, okay. You finally have. Yeah. Here's the thing with Brock. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it one more time. If Brock wanted, if Brock can wrestle a five-star match with a plethora of moves. It's just that people fail to understand that his gimmick now is Suplex City. That's what he's doing. He's not there to be Brock of 2002 where he, you know, does all these moves and all these acrobatic stuff, you know, shooting star press or whatever. That's, that's not him. But he still proves that, especially against all the little guys, this guy can have amazing matches. So and that's what people want to see. Are we? We might see that with him and Drew, but we might also see like giant versus giant. Yeah, like big man versus big man. And then my thing is that scares me is like, okay, let's say Drew wins, he gets the belt. Where do we go with him? I just hope he doesn't become this white meat baby face. Like he's baby face now, but don't go like don't turn the volume up on that baby face. Mm-hmm. He needs to have that that. You know that Scottish psychopath still there, like to dominate. I wouldn't mind a Drew McIntyre versus A Lister Black after Mania. Ooh, that would be nice. That would be nice. I would like to see that. And then we've already discussed, you know, the Universal Championship. So, how do you feel about like the storytelling on both on all three shows? NXT is great. They um, do their own thing. They know what they're doing because it's under Triple H's watch. Um, I like Keith Lee's emergence. I like that he's still the um, what is it? The North, North American, American champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gargano and Balor has been nice. And then I gotta be honest, I haven't been watching. But they but, know what they're doing. Yeah, and they and it's like even if he has control, he's still okay. What ideas do you got that I can make yes. work? I, I've said it before, I could flip on an NXT show right now, and just watching one match, you feel like there's structure. This is, like, this match is going somewhere. It's not just the last minute, hey guys, we got Raw in an hour, we, we need a 30 minute filler. Alright, uh, No Way Jose and uh, Eric Rowan, get over here. Yeah, you guys are going to fill up that 30 minute spot. No! Oh, you finished in 10? What else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, do we got that clip of something happening? Yeah, let's just play that. For the fourth time in a single episode of Raw. Good God. Seriously, they do that. Like, those package videos, yeah. they, they show it like two, three times in one episode. It's like, I we just saw this 30 minutes ago. I don't need to see it again. Um. No, yeah. So, NXT, like... They're their own show. They're their own thing. Continue. Yeah. Raw... Uh... Throw it to the wall. Throw it to the wall if it sticks, dude. SmackDown has reverted back to being like, okay, we're here. We're still here, right? I mean, granted that you realize that cameras will still be rolling and you just stop wrestling for a few seconds, not knowing that cameras are still rolling. You still have to sell it. You're on a show. Idiots. Oh, did I just break the fourth wall right there? Hello, Colt Cabana. Idiots. Um. And then you got 205 Live that does its own thing. I haven't been watching, but... It's been doing its own thing, but it's still in the progression that it's like, okay, we have our cruiserweights here. We have sometimes some of the guys from Raw or or, uh, NXT wrestling because they fit the weight class. And it's doing its own thing. It's fine. But you see our problem with the stories... That are on Raw and SmackDown, and it's like, all right, this story is good, this story sucks, this story is decent, this story needs to die, this story <laughs> is whatever. Why aren't we focusing on this one? Like, there's always something that's yeah. like good, bad, decent, shitty, we're done. Yeah. And it's like, you end the wrong things, you give too much to the wrong things, yeah. and you don't give enough to the right. To the right things, yep. And it's just, and that's where creative kills me because it's like, I, I the whole you. thing with Rowan sucks. I thought there was something... Maybe there's something really creepy in there. And then when it's like... 
It's a fake spider. Great. Because because they sold it like there's almost like human anatomy in that thing. That's what I thought. And there were a few times where like he would reach in and there would be blood on his hands, and I'm like. This could really go somewhere. Like, you don't know. Maybe like a Sister Abigail-esque type of thing. But, um, we got a rubber spider. And then you have something where you're wondering, like, oh, The Fiend wants John Cena. It was obvious. Yeah, but he still has an unsettled debt. And I like what he's, that he's putting fear into your little dapper American hero there and then because of all this you wonder why the competitors are kind of like enjoying what they're enjoying have you seen anything of AEW I haven't no so we always judge Cody for thinking oh I need to be over I need to be the man even though I'm doing my own thing with my own company, blah, 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 right? He's gone on a losing streak for months now. He did have a story with MJF. I saw that, the whipping. The whipping, the cage match with uh, his bodyguard, and then the match at Revolution he had where he lost unfairly. He's taking his sense like, all right, you guys don't like that I want to be over? Fine, I can put myself, I can bury myself. And he's doing it in a way where there's a story to it. Yeah. And when I sent you guys on Instagram the Jake, Jake Roberts, Snake yeah, promo, I saw that. My God, like if we can get a coach in the WWE, to be like that's how you cut a promo. All up here, here, Not none of here. this. Yeah. None of this. Rem- do you remember what you're gonna say? Do you remember suffer and suck attached? Remember that. <laughs> remember that. No. The guy went out there for five minutes and you were hooked on everything he told Cody. And you're like, holy crap, he really wants to come for blood. And the way he leaves with that quote, a wise man told me to never turn your back on someone you like or you fear. And he just is already turned and tosses the mic back. What does that tell you? For his age and his sobriety, the man still has it. Yeah. Uh, it all came natural, and he sold a story. That's one thing they're doing. The fact that we can't get that right now on WWE kills me. And it's like, young talent can't do what a man who's been doing this for years is doing. Well, they you can, can but they're 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 not they're not allowed. To. And this is what su- and that's what sucks because it's like I'm sure. You could have had Dean Ambrose or John mm-hmm. still be where he was if you told them, do whatever you want. You want to kill people in matches? Go for it. You want to cut your own promos? Do it. It's on you. But no. You put a gas mask on him. Make him a comic book character. And you wonder why he left. You wonder if Seth is going to leave. Because the fact that Seth is saying he wants a break... After Mania says a lot about one of your top guys and whether or not he still wants to be in WWE. But it's okay because Roman's getting the title. For the sense that some people may not be okay with it, even though people are okay that he takes it off Goldberg's uh, shoulder. It's okay, he's still taking it. Roman number one. Yay. Because apparently Roman's all you have, right? Yeah. You don't have The Fiend, you don't have Seth, you don't have... Hashtag. You don't have Cesaro. You don't have Sammy. You don't have Braun. You don't have... Oh, wait. You have a plethora of people. You know what's funny is that Attitude Era stars tell you that right now there is the most talent that there's ever been in the WWE. And if you think about it, it's true. about it. Yeah. Because what? In the Attitude Era, we focused on Austin, Triple H, and The Rock. As your main stars, yeah. yeah. And even your, like, mid-carters still found a way to be known and remembered. But yet, right now, you have anybody that can be yes. an A-list guy who's acting, like, under the mid-carter. Yeah. 
And that's ridiculous to me. And then, what's another thing going on in AEW? And I think, okay, so they have this thing with this group called the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're waiting for their leader. But it's been a buildup of it. And the creative process of it that they're doing, it's like, you want to know who it is? Oh, we think it's that guy. Wrong. Oh, we think it's the face. It's not that guy. It's a buildup. There's yeah. something to it. You can do something like that, and then all of a sudden you find out, oh, it was just... Give me a name. Samoa Joe. Yeah. Like, it, it, it wasn't even like how... And the attitude era we got, it's me, Austin. It, it was, was me, me all along. Like, you don't even get that in WWE anymore. Right now, they're, the speculation is that it's Matt Hardy. Because Hardy... I saw that, up. yeah. And they have this thing where I guess, like, their little dialogue, each letter in the beginning of the sentence spells uh, out Matt's name. Okay. How creative is that? How genius is that? When we can't even... Get someone who you've been waiting to come back, come back right. Ah, it kills me. And this is where I, I'm, I tell you that the state of the WWE is just in a bad spot right now. Um, we saw, or you guys told me about what he did uh, to Vicky Guerrero. Yeah, it's so stupid. And that post where someone said Vicky Guerrero's husband, being Eddie Guerrero, uh, literally died busting his ass for that company. And now the poor lady is just trying to get a few dimes and nickels by having people from AEW be a guest. And you do that? You shame shun her? It's shameful. It's disrespectful. It's and And I know... We let some slip out, but I'm just going to say it's fucking stupid. Yeah. It's horrible. It's like the lady's husband died for the sport, and yet she contributed years after for your company, and this is how you repay her. No. 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 It's ridiculous. To me, honestly, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry, but the old man has lost it. The, the 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 Vince that that we all grew up knowing, who had all these creative, extensive storylines that would have a payoff, and you know all that that guy is long gone. And I, the funny thing is, like I I think back to a few things. I'm like, I always want to think that Vince is a good guy, but there are so many things that I just hear and I see, and I'm like. What a twisted bastard. Like, you look at all the stuff with Ashley Massaro. When she came forth with that information, was like, look, this is what happened. And they put a gag order on her and go, look, just, 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 just go, go. Oh, but it's okay because the intention of the product is to put smiles on people's faces. At what cost? At what cost? People's lives? People's livelihood? Apparently. So, so, if we can wrap it up, do you think there needs to be a monumental shift in power? Other than just Triple H. Yes. I think that what... I mean, because they had the whole thing with Bischoff coming and doing the thing with SmackDown. And then he left. And then a month stuff later. happened, and then Bischoff is all of a sudden gone. Um... Paul Heyman being a creative juice for Raw is good, but it's not enough. And I can appreciate the the Lance Storms and um, the Joey Mercury's and the John Laurinaitis being all backstage, but I just feel like it's it's not enough. Not, it's not there. It's just it's not there. And I, I'll say it again: if we have to get Vince Russo on the phone, that's it. But you see where the strain is. In his career. In or world. if you don't want to hire previous writers, let some of your talent have some of the creative juice. You see what NXT is doing. Why can't we do that on Raw and SmackDown? I'm not saying listen to, you know, little Joe over there who's it's a, it's a second day wrestling and thinks he has a good idea. But for the Samoa Joes, for the Seth Rollinses, for the people who have become at this point a... Um, 
what do you call it, a veteran in your company, they got good ideas. Why can't we listen? Oh, because if it doesn't come out of the creative room, it's it's not good. It's enough. garbage. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much where I stand with the whole situation. You know, is uh, there's a lot of crap going on uh, with this uh, global thing going on. WrestleMania is kind of getting a eh, build up. Like Steve Austin and Undertaker are coming to an empty arena next week. What's the point of three sixteen day? I mean, there's I'm, no crowd pop. There's no, there's no need for Stone Cold at that point. I'm sorry. I, I think that Austin is going to get integrated into WrestleMania somehow, which I think is why they were doing this. Maybe a special referee, maybe the host of WrestleMania, maybe something else. I don't know, but, um, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a loss for words. Right here. So, there you go, guys. Like, I, I forewarned everybody, a pretty extensive episode, but we got through it. Uh, these are just our grievances and our sentiments about how we have been feeling about the product as of recent. In the comment section below, let us know, guys, how you feel about the product, what you agree with, what you disagree with, what you would change, what you would uh, let stay the same. Um, that's pretty much it for this episode, and we will catch you all next time.